Okay, hydrates. If you understand the naming and formulas of ionic compounds, then you'll find the hydrates are a subtle little twist on those. Basically, ionic compounds sometimes have water molecules loosely attached to their crystals and their crystal lattice. The number of water molecules is indicated by a prefix in the name. So for example, in example A, you see calcium chloride trihydrate. So that tri telling us that there are three water molecules associated with each formula unit of the calcium chloride. And so we follow the same cross down method for the ionic compound just as we did before. So symbols and charges. And then we cross our numbers down. So we'll come up with a two here and a one here. And so we have CaCl2 and then we put a dot it's not a period on the bottom of the line, it's a dot in the space of where we're writing the formula. And then we indicate the number of water molecules. And so that try, right, tells us, and you see I've listed the prefixes on the side, and so we have three H2O. And so hydrates as formulas are going to look like ionic compounds, but then there's always going to be a dot and the number of water molecules. Mono means one, and you do include it. If it's monohydrate, you'll write dot H2O. You don't have to show the one, but you do write monohydrate. Dihydrate will be two H2O. You've seen the tri, tetras four, penta, think pentagon, hexa, hexagon, six, hepta, think um, seven in French is sept, S-E-P-T, and so hepta, uh, similar spelling there. Octa, I think of octopus with eight legs. Nona, I think of 90-year-old Italian grandmothers, so respectful term there. And Deca, I uh, think of decades, so groups of 10 years. However it works for you, you need to know those prefixes. Okay, so give, uh, give the rest of these a shot, B, C, and D. Knowing what you know about ionic compounds, you should be able to handle the magnesium sulfate, K3PO4, and Cu2SO3, part of these uh, names and formulas, and then use your prefixes to indicate the hydrate. Check back with the video when you're done. Okay, and so the symbol for magnesium, Mg, with a two positive charge, sulfate, SO4 in brackets because it's a polyatomic ion, two negative charge, we cross the twos down, and now when we check those twos, we realize two to two reduces to one to one. And so we'll have MgSO4, heptahydrate dot 7 H2O. There's our final answer. K3PO4 dot 4 H2O. We'll have the potassium ion and the phosphate ion. And so this is potassium phosphate. And now the prefix for 4 is tetra. And so we have tetrahydrate. And finally, for example, D. We have to figure out the charge on that copper ion, so have you figured that out? Again, with three capital letters, I knew there was a polyatomic ion involved, so I go past the metal and its subscript, open the brackets, go to the very end and close it. So if you miss that, then maybe your Roman numeral has a mistake, let's see. So we uncross and have a positive one here, uncross the sulfite and have a negative two or two negative, and is sulfite correctly negative two? Yes, it is, so if that's correct, then this is correct. And so we have copper one sulfite, and then the hydrate, there's six H2O, so we'll have hexahydrate. We'll do a lab later in the course involving hydrates. Now, if you chose to call the copper charge X, then you would have filled in a negative two here and your equation would have looked like this. Two X plus one times negative two equals zero. Two X minus two equals zero. Two X equals two and we divide by two at the end, X equals one. And so you'll see that that is the original one that we determined. So whichever your method, you should end up with copper one sulfite hexahydrate. If you said copper three, then I would suggest to you to remember to add in the brackets if they're not present in the question when a polyatomic ion is present. And that's it for hydrates.